talk about a, a protest that was yes. involved in the er early part of this. You should know that every spring, I found out in my first year here in 87, as I came up the uh, elevator and got to the 10th floor of the president's office and I was vice provost, the floor was covered with people, uh, African Americans, a few white students being supportive, and I'm shocked. There are mm -hmm. TV cameras, mm -hmm. and there's this big protest. And I'm thinking the last time I'd seen a protest was when I was a Hampton student in Hampton as a part of the leadership. Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm thinking, oh my God, I've become the man. I was mm -hmm. the administration. Uh -uh. And I asked the secretary, what is this? And she said, oh, don't worry. This happens every year at UMBC. It was, mm -hmm. <laughs> it was springtime, uh -huh. and there was a protest. And when we got to the bottom of it, um, students said the place... Um, had been racist about some things, and mm. we tried to figure out what that meant. We talked about the issues. There was an incident that we went through. But when I examined the records of the students, what I found was that the average black male GPA was a 1.9. Mm. Average black female GPA was a 2.0. And the primary reason students were not succeeding was that many wanted to be doctors and had done poorly in chemistry, mm -hmm. you see. Now, I went to the white... GPAs and the Asian GPAs and found that the whites had about a 2.5 and 2.6, Asians 2.8, 2.9. Mm -hmm. I then did, we did focus groups on the students and found that the Asian students studied more than the white students who studied more than the black students. Mm -hmm. Now, then I did, when we did the uh, focus groups, what black students would say, what was racism? Well, I studied as much as anybody else and I got a D and everybody on both sides of me, white, got A's and B's and mm -hmm. the teacher's white. So there was the racism. So, you so factor. That's exactly right. Yeah. It must be some prejudice here, mm -hmm. right? Just not understanding. They'd come from different high schools where the level of rigor was very different from what they found in other schools. And, and as a result, students were not as well prepared. That was the issue. They were not as well prepared and didn't know how to study and weren't working with other people. At the same time, my colleagues began to see that they needed to do more to give support, including quite frankly, more feedback to students, not waiting until midterm to having a test, having a chemistry mm -hmm. tutorial. Center. Now, all of this we began to look at at the same time that I was saying, but there are special issues these black students are facing, issues involving their feeling ordinary, issues involving their thinking they're not smart. Mm -hmm. And um, that's when I began to talk about those issues with people, and that led to my meeting the head of the ABLE Foundation, at the same time, uh, the ABLE Foundation head, Bob Embry, had been talking to Bob Meilhoff, who had been interest interested in the issue of black males and the fact mm -hmm. that there was such negativity on TV. He got us together. Bob Meilhoff and his wife were absolutely fascinated by the idea that they wanted to make a difference for black males. Mm -hmm. And we were able to marry the two ideas. And uh, in spite of my protest at first about doing it only for black males, I want to give them credit. Mm -hmm. uh, we did it the first year for all black males and then the next year for women, and that began the program. But there were all kinds of other issues in terms of leadership, in terms of particularly getting the campus to have um, positive feelings about what we were doing. Sometimes people think it's unfair to mm -hmm. do something for a particular group. It's only when you can use everything from data analysis to focus groups to people talking about the issues to bringing some allies along to looking at the issues that you can make a big difference. In effect, you had to create a conversation that oh. endorsed this idea yes, yes. before you could put the idea in, into motion. Before you, because we had begun, I had begun to get letters from people as we began to reach out to schools to say, mm -hmm. we've got this program for black males. Yeah. And there were people who liked it, other people who didn't like it. And it, there were differences of opinion. And what I had to explain to a number of my white women friends was that the issues they were concerned about with white men were different from the issues for black men. Mm -hmm. Black men were not in positions of power. Yeah. There was not, you didn't find large numbers of men, black men in science mm -hmm. at all. Women had actually even then begun to have larger percentages in med school, unlike what we had seen in other groups. And um, black women were very helpful. Mm -hmm. quite frankly, and saying, no, we need some things for black males, specifically, mm -hmm. because we're seeing that women are, are doing well and the men are not. Mm -hmm. So we like this. I had parents of daughters saying it to But it was a very sensitive matter that I had to learn how to talk about in such a way that I wasn't offensive to anybody mm -hmm. when they were bothered by these things. Now, in the, since that time, we have developed a mile program that has black men and women, but also whites who have an interest in these issues. 
but we still talk with specificity about each group mm. and about their needs.